I grew up happy in the Appalachian Mountains. We had good Christmases. We had love. I was normal. But now, <laughs> what the hell am I now? Can you hear me? No challenge is more urgent. We can either settle for a country where a shrinking number of people do really well, while a growing number barely get by. Or we can restore an economy where everyone gets a fair shot and everyone does their fair share and everyone plays by the same set of rules. Thanet has one of the poorest wards in the country. Even though we're only just over an hour from one of the richest wards in the country, what kind of message do you think the film has for people in Thanet? I mean, I think that living in an area of, of deprivation, people are people in those in those areas are experiencing the very very harshest end of um, of what inequality does. Um, absolutely, um, but in a way, the message of the film is that even though the sort of sharp divide that you see in a very short space of time might make people think um, you know the rich are the relatively rich are kind of all totally fine actually it's that they're, they're not actually having a great time either um, and so it's not just about uh, dealing with the absolute poverty that we need to look at it's about acknowledging that the system really is incredibly disfigured by this and this is something that we need to do for the benefit of everybody. Can you tell me something about how and why the film was made? In 2010 I read a book called Spirit Level which I'm sure a lot of people are aware of and the book had a sort of series of graphs which kind of showed this sort of extraordinary relationship between rising countries with high levels of inequality and various different social outcomes. Poor social outcomes, I mean health, mental health, crime, uh, community, attitudes towards um, incarceration. Um, and I thought it was absolutely fascinating in what it was telling us about society. Um, and I spoke to the authors of the book um, about whether you know, it would be something that we could think about turning into a film. The divide is very character driven, it doesn't have graphs in it, it doesn't have um, a lot of people telling us what we should think, but what it does do is it focuses very much on actual people, um, so that we really experience the extraordinary rise in inequality through the eyes and voices of people living at different levels of the income scale. Um, and the reason I, I felt this was a good approach was um, I suppose we have had a lot of you know people putting opinions out on these things but sometimes you know you fail to really connect with what it means for all of us um, and I and I just thought you know if we can create an emotional connection and get people to understand that actually this situation doesn't really benefit anybody and it has such extraordinary sort of psychological and social effects um, that we can't ignore um, that that might be a way of reaching a new audience with with that research. I didn't want them just to be case studies of an economic situation. I wanted us to really get to know these people as people. You know, these are just people that could, you could live next door to and, and to really see how that was affecting them. We grew up in an environment where you never really knew what was going to happen and that creates a lot of uncertainty. Compared to previous generations, okay, we might be a bit skinny, we might not be able to afford the best pair of shoes, but we're not living in poverty. But now, <laughs> what the hell am I now? <laughs>